Hey everybody, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. We have another Legends of Arcane True Story interlude published on Shard Dundra's channel. You should check it out and watch if you don't want my commentary on it. But because this has not technically been released, just like the last interlude when I put out a video for it, this is a reaction video. So we'll be pausing, we'll be talking, we gotta make this transformative. Blood and water. Several days have passed since the tribal dominion has defeated their enemies, but while they prepare for peace, unbeknownst to them, the battle in Saria is not over yet, as the Mogtar, led by Gorthog, hunt down any remaining Darkborn and other servants of the Dark One after having lost Edale's trail. Meanwhile, Garden and his forces push the demons out of the kingdoms, using the Purificator to unleash utter devastation upon all enemy forces without having to engage them in battle. They slowly retake their way to Fort Ashrazil, or as the humans of the kingdoms call it, the Gate of Hell the border fortress to the lands of the demons. Couple things here. So this is going to be taking place of the interlude from the second human book, or partially at least where Gardon gets the pact from Ibira, is my guess. But then also this is telling us that Gorthog is no longer following Edale's trail, so I don't think that those two are ever going to be linking up, just based on how this is worded here. But the, also that Gorthog and the Mogtar are still doing stuff in Sauria. Interesting. All right, send me in, and let's see what uh, what's in store for us here. Vale and I have discussed the plans with Prince Torres and his advisors again. As soon as we have conquered the border fort and opened the path into enemy territory, several knight regiments will come charging in and sweep through the demons. The prince will lead them himself. Good luck. Good luck with that, sir. I wish you the best of luck with that. The remaining forces of the kingdoms will support us in taking down the fortress as well as taking control of it and rebuilding it once we have taken it. Once the forces from Rengar arrive, they will join our invasion force. Is this like a different Rengar force that existed separate from uh, what was attacking the orcs, I wonder? Or maybe this is like they're expecting those people because they thought they were going to win in Salria. Surely Rengar has a larger force, though. Lord Harmos, on the other hand, will stay with us, probably to keep an eye on our actions. The Order Scum clearly doesn't fully trust us. Let's make the best of it and have him make himself useful by burning a demon or two before he sets himself on fire. Dude, look at Merlon and Korra, like, flanking up at the top with their with their little caps. Oh, it's it's wonderful. Luckily enough, the prince doesn't listen too much to his ramblings. Are you sure we want to do this? We have no idea what's waiting for us on the other side of that fortress. You don't, Seabright. I do. I've been able to obtain a map that shows some of the land behind the border. The fortress city of Karzanath is the closest enemy stronghold behind the gate, and the first place to go after leaving the border fortress behind. Where? But where? where? How? How did you get a map, dog? You gonna explain that? You're looking a bit pale, Cora. Have you been around the undead a bit too much? Unlike others, I don't drink myself to sleep, Seabright. I've spent the last few nights trying to find out as much as possible to be prepared for what lies ahead. Ah, lack of sleep then. Make sure you get some. You'll need it in the battle ahead. Cora is not going to join us, Merlon. What? As you should know, Grand Admiral Garden and I plan to move the Purificator into the Demon Border Fortress. We need someone to tr we trust to accompany it, and since Korra is also familiar with the locations behind the gate, it makes sense to have her coordinate both the tr and the transport and the targeting of the Purificator. Ugh. Okay, so this is a mistake, obviously. I mean, we know that this whole offensive into the Demon Fortress is a mistake, but this is key in that Korra will be separated from us because I feel like Korra is bound to maybe have a meetup with one or more of her sisters, perhaps Edale at some point. So I feel like we needed a reason to have Korra in a different place. Ah, I didn't know one of us was going to. I'll be on my way as soon as you no longer need me, Gardon. That's King Gardon to you. We're done here. You may leave as soon as possible. Merlon, you won't drink too much in the next days. I need you in your best shape. I would like you to meet me later, Gardon, regarding the tactical movement of my forces in the upcoming battle. Tepid pause. Yeah, don't be so brazen about it, Loreen. Jeez. Is this really necessary? I'm afraid I must insist to make all points as clear as possible. Tepid pause. How sad. <sighs> I'll just, uh... Be taking my leave for now. Talk to you tomorrow. I will also take my leave now. Have a good night. Tepid pause. 
Talk to you later then, Gardon. I'm looking forward to it. Gur. Keep your axe where it is. Ah, Whitefield, what news do you bring? My king, we received, received word from Saria. Tepid pause. The armies of the newly formed tribal dominion have destroyed the forces that opposed them. Our riders have met with some of the surviving mercenaries and Rengians who were on their way back to Rengar. What about the Imperial forces? What about General Elver and General Haran? Scattered. The mercenaries saw a warlock take down General Haran. As for General Elver, none could tell where she was, so our men went to search the battlefield. They found her lifeless body among the dead, my king. Dead? Are you certain about this? I'm afraid so, my king. Her wounds were... She had been wounded very badly, but was still recognizable. That was what the messenger said. The riders are bringing her body to the capital. Tepid pause. Tepid pause. <laughs> Thank you, Whitefield. You may now return to join with Beer and secure the realm. As you wish. I'm sorry that the news I brought was so dire. I shouldn't laugh. I just laughed at my own stupid wine noise, but it is sad because Zed was sort of the pet of all three of these individuals, Praxius and Naveen and Gardon. She killed her. Avin would never have fought them to the death. Not like this. Thanok, I want that cannon pointed at Sauri at once. Let's go. You're not thinking straight. Don't do this, Gardon. You're not giving orders to my king, Shadow Creature. Why? Why shouldn't I use the damn oversized cannon on them? Because you care for Amari so much? Because you made me save her with the cannon? And this is how she repays me? As soon as you bring Juanor back, the remaining kingdoms will turn against you. You will need an ally. As much as I dislike to put my trust into them, he is right. With the demons being invaded, there's no other immediate threat for our neighbors apart from the orcs. They might be tempted to act against us when there is no one else to oppose them. Vale, the voice of reason? Thank you, Vale. And... Amari did not kill Avin. I did. You... Avine was not herself. It was Tragok. His damn manipulations had found their way into her head, and she wholeheartedly believed every word. I've tried to free her from his influence, to make her see reason, but I failed. Not how I expected this to go. This seemed like it was a big setup for, like, Gardon to find out about this, and Brian to have kept it a secret. I like that it's being put out in the open now, so that it's not just this lingering plot thread that's, like, post-true story, but I also don't like how this might set up um, some serious dissonance between Brian and Gardon. Not you, too. Avine would have unwittingly lured you into Tragok's fangs. He would have bestowed upon both of you a fate much worse than death. He's a heartless monster, just like Eridon. I asked Amari to kill her, but Avine survived, heavily wounded. I couldn't leave her there. I gave her peace and made sure that neither Tragok nor Eridon would be able to get his hands on her. I regretted it the very moment I realized what I had done. By that point, it was too late to undo it. She meant much to me as well, Gardon. It was her last wish that I keep you safe. Tepid pause. You traitor! Gardon, don't! You allow your emotions to get the better of you. You're stronger than that. Killing him now won't change anything. If that twisted shadow even allows you to kill him in the first place. Vale? The voice of reason again? Good job, Vale. Thank you. You're you're proving your your A tier on my tier list, Vale. Thank you. Wine. I can understand that you hate me right now, Gardon. If I could undo it, I would. It was a terrible mistake, and I want to set things right. That is why I once again ask you to abandon this course. Put an end to this madness. Turn your armies around. Take the lands that you have conquered and leave the demons alone before something terrible happens. Tepid pause. Well, he's definitely not going to listen to you now. No. You'll not tell me what to do. Never again. You talk about regret. You talk about wanting to set things right, yet you were the one who killed Aveen. You told Amari to strike her, even though I was the one who saved the orcs from the undead. You're a hypocrite, Brian. 
How are you any better than your brothers? A part of me really urges to kill you right now. Yet another part doesn't wish to throw the things away you've done for me. You know, he's probably regretting his talk with Van Dorse in retrospect now, because a big part of that, a big linchpin of that was his his uh, relationship with Brian. I mean, also the Black Dragons and all that, but I feel like the biggest part was Van Dorse saying, like, you need to disconnect from Brian. And now Gardon might be looking back and be like, well, shit, <laughs> maybe I should have taken the deal if this was how things were going to end up. Uh, but this also is why Gardon has moved into S tier for me as a character. Like, he just, it, it's just him being the only one who's willing to go the full mile to actually stop the invasion, but he's lost pretty much everything along the way. But it was, it was like a, an iterative loss, right? It was just like bit by bit by bit, he was chipped away at it. It wasn't just like suddenly he's a different character. But like, Gardon now, it, this is why he's just so myopic. And he got rid of his friendship amulet, and now he just drinks more. So he's it's much more tragic character, I feel like, than when compared to the second um, human book, for sure. Leave. Leave right now. I don't want you anywhere near me or close to me. Ever again. Don't do this. Not now. You need me against the leader of the demons. I will find another way. Now get out. Tepid pause. Thanok, it would be better for Brian to leave now. You heard her, Shadow Creature. Get a move on. Now. Growl. Snarl. Tepid pause. As you wish, Gardon. I will take my leave. But know this. A long time ago, I promised to Avene once that I would keep you safe and protect you. And I will keep that promise. Even if I have to do it from afar. Tepid pause. Move. Now. Woof. It was the right choice. He couldn't stay after such betrayal, but killing him would have also been a mistake, I believe. I need some time for myself. As you wish. I'll talk to you later. Feridal, I need something to drink. Tell one of the guards to fetch me some wine. So that was... That was rough. I, um... I think that... In Second Human Book, Brian was with us through Gates of Hell, but then he mysteriously disappears right before the betrayal. Whereas here, he's being forced to leave before that based on everything that's happened with Saria and Naveen. Tell me, Thanak, does he have your loyalty? You're in no position to question that. Of course he does, creature. And the queen? Vale is proven. You know I wasn't talking about her. That is none of your business, creature. She could have done more than just hiding for so long, waiting for someone to find her. It was difficult. For you, or for her. You should leave right now before the king changes his mind. Yes, I will. I just want you to consider this. Gardon gave you hope and purpose. He led your people out of hiding. He did, not your dragon queen. There may be a point which you might have to choose. The last time the Black Dragons abandoned their allies, it ended in disaster both. Does he have your loyalty? Yes. Thank you for answering. I will go now and leave him in your hands. Tepid pause. Look, you're not going to move Thanok up in my tier list. You're just not. This coincides with a short story, post-true uh, post story, uh, short story, where uh, Gardon receives a letter from Brian. Though the short story it might be at retconned a little bit now. Like, it wasn't... It, Gardon didn't really seem like he had any, like, malice or regret in the way that he thought of Brian. Um, but Brian sent him a letter basically saying, like, I suggest you disconnect from the Black Dragon Queen and replace her. Uh, like, basically assassinate her and replace her. Because he seems... Brian seems suspicious of the Black Dragon's loyalty, considering they abandoned the OG Juenor, and that's why the nation fell. Kind of a weird plot point to bring up now, when the clear and present danger is Gardon's myopic march into Demon Land. Master, I, I'm not sure how I feel about or our orders. Bloodclaw and his followers have done terrible things, but if they all die as Aradon wishes, then it's only a matter of time until the kingdoms are on the brink of defeat again, and then there will be no empire to save them.
The master has fallen silent again. The plan is questionable. As much as part of me wants to see Bloodclaw and his henchmen die for what they did, it feels wrong. What purpose does this have, especially now that he sent Bavrazel away? Even if he's not done that, killing Bloodclaw is a decision that I do not find myself agreeing with. I'm also not exactly fond of Bloodclaw, even if I find myself seeing some similarities between us after what our Shades have witnessed in Sauria. We will make some adjustments to our orders. What do you mean? After everything that's happened recently, I'm starting to believe that the return of the Master's adversaries has clouded his judgment. Rahandir going rogue here at the very end. If he hears you say that... He won't. I believe that he's lost sight of what's important. Originally, he wanted to prevent either side from going too powerful. We will accomplish that. This is no betrayal, despite my recent doubts about his judgment. We are preventing that the Master makes a terrible mistake that he'll regret later. We will force the Iron Fist to fall back by retreating ourselves once the fortress is secured. If the demons are as predict predictable as I expect them to be, they will try to retake the fortress the very second it falls. Without us, the Iron Fist will have little choice but to flee. And the Purificator will be en route. We will let them be driven back rather than slaughter them. Yes, I like this plan. I doubt, however, that Cromer Cazardius will play along with this. They are bound to the Master, not you. This makes more sense as well, if we recall. I don't know about Cazardius. It's a shame about Kazardius, because I think if Kazardius was able to, he would actually try to side with Gardon. Um, but Krom has a very specific action that we saw at the end of the second human book, and I feel like that's what's going to be unavoidable. Make no mistake, Safira. We will not be able to save everyone. It is vital, however, that Bloodclaw and his wife-to-be survive. As for the rest... We will do what we can, but we cannot openly go against the servants of the Master. Otherwise, the consequences for everyone involved, not just us, may be fatal. Dude, Undead Civil War mission would be really cool for Gates of Hell. But it's gotta be a, a Gardon mission. I'll try to get an audience with the Master. Perhaps I could convince him, but at the moment he doesn't seem to let anyone see him. Some time ago, a rather frustrated Ornassian left the Dead Mountain because of that. Harantel Kazor has also left despite his injuries, but I believe that his departure is still part of the original plan. I will see what I can do. Good. We'll talk again once this is over, Safira. Yes, Master. I'm glad that we are doing this, despite my dislike of Bloodclaw. She says it's like, oh, I dislike Bloodclaw, but she has, like, an actual, like, vengeance tour against him. Like, she wants to kill him because of what he did to Solana, or what he ordered to have done to Solana. So I wonder if Safira is just going to snipe... Just just casually take out Sir Ferdal, you know? Just be like, hey, I saw you beat the crap out of Solana, so bye. That's kind of what I'm thinking. What is it, General? I'm in no mood for company. I was wondering if there was anything you needed, my king. More wine, perhaps? You should know better than to waste my time with such things. I'm sorry, my king, but I... I wanted to tell you how much of an honor it has been. After all that's happened, the demonic invasion, the rebellion, the betrayal of the Golden Guard, the uprising of the elves, the battle against Van Dors, the defense of the cannon. When I joined the army after losing my family, I never would have expected to come this far. Even if we didn't survive this grand battle, it will become a story worthy of legends. Yet I have no doubt that we shall win with you commanding us. It is an honor that I... Enough. It takes more than that to trick me. I know that you're not General Greendale. Reveal yourself to me or I'll strike you down where you stand. Ah, okay. Clever, clever reveal. I'm not surprised that you realized. After all, I have a will of my own. And poor Claire does not. Demon filth, just as I expected. I'll forgive your lack of manners this time, my dear King Bloodclaw. You must have had some quite, quite some wine this evening. Need a shoulder to lie on or maybe something even more inviting? Your magic won't work on me. You'll tell me who you are, what you're doing here, and what you want. Then I might make your death less painful. I hope, I wonder, maybe we'll get some some additional Ibira motivation um, dialogue here. Like, I don't really remember what she talks about in the second human book other than she 
doesn't like she basically wants to balance both sides here and like make sure that Gardon doesn't get too far, but also let the, the, the demons won't put up too much of a fight. So like she offers him a pact, but we didn't hear too much, I don't think, or m too much specifics um, in the second human book, other than she wasn't really in full support of the invasion at this point. Charming. My name is Ibira, the leader of the Soul Leader Legion, Cursadar, whom I believe you are accustomed with. Wishes either your death or your loyalty. His wishes have become rather irrelevant as of late, however. You and I could help each other, my dear. I have a proposal for you. One that I am sure you will find quite intoxicating. A proposal. You must think me a fool. I'm not- I'm going to destroy your kind. I have no intention of cooperating with any of you. I'm not like Genethys or any other fool who has been tricked by your kind. I'll not make any deals with the likes of you. Genethys was but a pawn. You're much more of a man than he ever was. I've been watching you in your progress for some time now. I must say I'm quite impressed. You're quite something. For a mortal. Flattery won't save you from my blade, succubus. I'm growing weary of this. How unfortunate for you. What the? Don't worry. Unlike the servants of the old sack of bones, I won't take you prisoner. I just want you to listen to me without trying anything stupid. You're wasting your time, then. I will not retreat. I will finish what I started. You cannot possibly hope to achieve that goal, and you know it. You're throwing your life away. I didn't take you for that kind of person, my dear. I expect you to be smarter than that. I've sacrificed too much not to try to end this threat your kind poses to mine. As long as there are demons, humanity will always be at risk. Ah, right. Your kind considers us their arch-nemesis, do you not? We're part of this world just like you are, and you'd be surprised how many of us actually do not give a damn about your kind. If all of us were willing to unite under one leader and invade your realms, you'd stand no chance. Don't say anything, sweetie. I'm of course not here to threaten you, nor underestimate you. I'm quite aware of your skills. I want the same as many others do by now. I want this war to be over, and for that to happen, Cursedar must be dealt with. Permanently. He's lost sight of what's important. The only reason why I even supported this dread lord who will forever lot live in the shadow of his predecessor is because he had claimed to focus all efforts on taking down the old bag of bones and retake an artifact that's rightfully ours from him. Oh, they want the Zindrak ring, probably. Suffice to say that he failed in both regards and instead decided to get drawn more into the conflict with your race. No doubt because of warmongers like that fool Hisrathian, as well as manipulations from the same entity that even staged this whole war in the first place. Get to the point. I offer you this. Take the fortress and slay Cursadar. If you do not have the means to permanently destroy him, then I will deal with him for you. Keep Fort Eshrazil. If you wish, but do not commit suicide by pushing further. Secure your kingdoms by reinforcing the gate to our lands. In exchange for this, I will lead a part of the defensive force away and make sure that there is no repeat of the last two wars for the next 300 years, as long as you do not launch any invasions of your own, of course. I will even try to keep smaller raids to a minimum. I offer you something that no human has ever been offered before, Bloodclaw. A true peace between our peoples. No expensive invasion. No logistical challenges. No suicidal charges. A tempting offer, wouldn't you agree? I'm no fool. I can't trust the word of a demoness. This is very similar to the last one, but just her talking about wanting to get the... the demon god ring back, and... Just how the whole war has been manipulated from the start. I think there were hints of this in the in the book era stuff, but this is a lot more pointed, for sure. You think I could trust you, Bloodclaw? In another life, you would have made a fine demon. Has anyone ever told you that? We will swear a magical oath, my dear. One that makes both of us literally unable to break this pact. Neither of us will be able to betray the other. I mean, how would you really know? She's just like, oh, trust me, it's magical. <laughs> Good luck. I'm curious if he's going to take it. He seems dead set against it. In the original second human book of this interlude, you had the choice. And it would make Gates of Hell easier or harder. But I don't think there was anything beyond that. Like, there was no downside to just taking the pact and making it easier, if I recall.
Tepid paws. This is the best offer you'll ever get, Bloodclaw. No small print, no tricks, no intrigues. I just want both of us to be able to do what we want without the other getting involved. I decline your offer, Demoness. I will see your race utterly destroyed one way or another, and I do not trust any words you say. <sighs> How unfortunate. It would be such a shame to see you die so soon. Very well, I will take my leave then. Sweet dreams, King Bloodclaw. I am sure we will meet again. Perhaps you will reconsider after having seen what you are up against. Perhaps then my offer will look more enticing to you. Big decline from Gardon. Okay, the next video started auto-playing and it scared the crap out of me. So, well, I'll just cut back to this. That was the end. Uh, honestly, I don't, I don't even know what more to say other than the new things with the true story is the relationship between Gardon and Brian is strained, if not completely broken at this point. But Brian's just going to keep doing stuff behind the scenes. He's just going to keep chilling with his girl, Amari. She's, she's got the true potential, okay? Let's be real here. Gardon, you know, changed from a man of duty now to just a guy who's got, who feels like he's got nothing to lose. Even though he's got all these, this new land to rule, he's just willing to throw his life away. The unfortunate part is that means he throws away the lives of all these other people too. Um, I, I think this stuff with the Veen is, is tragic, but maybe could have afforded even just one more scene of setup. I think the only other interaction between Gardon and Naveen is when they talk at the Pearl of Lore mission. I'm pretty sure, like with the one where where Margazar is the is the boss. Um that's the only thing I can think of. Um I don't know, it's hard. I like I almost feel like Gardon should have been written to be even just a little bit softer in the like, prior to, like, the second book era of the true story. Um, but in either case, I like how he, you know, he was a likable character from the start. You didn't really know what he was up to, but you knew he had some plans and they were working. And he got a lot of the other regiments to start using necromancers and stuff where you're like, okay, they're going to actually try and win. And that was a big positive. But then as he had to kill Praxius and he found out Avene was dead and then you learn that they had this relationship when they were kids... Um, you know, it makes Praxis and Avina a lot more interesting. And remember, like this, I mean, this is just so long. The, the true story is, goes back, we've been playing for, for years now, but there were scenes I remember between Gardon and Praxis and Zed, and then Gardon and Avin, and I think Zed. So it's like, it's cool to see this, like this puzzle piece fall into place where like the three of them were like best friends as kids, and they all kind of went different paths into adulthood. And it makes sense because they're all... Well, Praxius, Praxius was not, or at least we have no reason to believe he was an illegitimate child of the Emperor, but both Avene and Gardon were, and they were step-siblings. So I understand that also is why Gardon um, cares even more for Avene in that way. I think what's unfortunate, and I this is probably just the method of the storytelling as well through Warcraft 3, is... If Brian was willing to just go to Gardon and admit to him that he killed Avin, why didn't he just l go to Gardon before any of this and say Avin's about to make a big mistake? And cuz like he basically told Gardon I was afraid she was going to trick you. But by going to him after she's dead, I mean, what what's stopping Gardon in from going back to the emperor again? if he thought that that's what Avene was going to try to do anyway. I don't, you know what, I, I, this isn't really falling into place the way I'm imagining it, but basically I'm surprised Brian was willing to be as forthcoming as he was, considering he killed Avene to cover it up. And then he's like, oh, oops, I shouldn't have done, <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. But the reason, it, like, it wasn't because he thought that the reasoning was wrong. He just regretted doing the action. So I, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess I understand how we are at where we're at. It's just hard to, I don't know, feels like we took a bit of a roundabout way and I'm. you have to suspend some disbelief to be like, okay, well, Brian killed Avene to stop her from talking to Gardon or the Emperor. What difference would it make, though? Because Gardon's on a different continent anyway. Um, it's more like Avene could have tricked Gardon, but Brian talking to Gardon without taking action against Avene would have made Gardon maybe a at least a little more inclined to listen to him 
Maybe? I, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, we are where we are, and I understand why we have to be where we are, and it does make sense. And again, a lot of this is just, there's just major constraints with the method of the, the storytelling, but uh, I'm really enjoying Gardon's uh, character plot line much, much more in the true story because of all of this. It's fantastic. All right, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time for presumably The Gates of Hell. Bye-bye.